Hello, everyone. Welcome to How to Read Chinese Poetry podcast. I'm Zhong Qicai, the program host. In this podcast program, my colleagues and I aim to introduce cutting-edge scholarship on Chinese poetry to a broad general audience. We will present 52 episodes covering the major poetic genres developed over China's long history. Each episode features close reading of one or more of the best-known Chinese poems, with an aim to illuminate their literary greatness and cultural significance. For all the discussed poems, Chinese texts, English translation, romanization, and brief notes are provided at our website, howtoreadchinesepoetry.com. By following the 52 episodes, listeners will gain a bird's eye view of the thematic, formal, and generic evolution of Chinese poetry from antiquity to the modern era. Instruct and delight is what we wish to accomplish in each talk. Without further ado, let's begin. Today we are doing episode 8. The poem chosen for our discussion is I Beg of You, Zhongzi. I beg of you, Zhongzi. I beg of you, Zhongzi. Don't cross into my hamlet. Don't break my planted willows. Could I care so much for them? It's father and mother I dread. Zhong, you're embraceable. But the talk of my father and mother is indeed something dreadful. I beg of you, Zhongzi. Don't climb over my wall. Don't break my planted mulberries. Could I care so much for them? It's all my brothers I dread. Zhong, you're embraceable. But the talk of all my brothers is indeed something dreadful. I beg of you, Zhongzi. Don't leap into my garden. Don't break my planted hardwoods. Could I care so much for them? I dread others will talk too much. Zhong, you're embraceable, but others talking too much is indeed something dreadful. Does this poem remind you of the famous balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet? Or is more than adaptation West Side Story? In that scene, Romeo worked his way through the woods towards the balcony where Julia is standing. In response to Romeo's outpouring of love, Julia warns him of the death that awaits him should he climb over her family's walls. In this searching poem, a female speaker watches her lover moving closer and closer to her and repeatedly warns him of a similar danger. But here, there's no direct contact between the two, and the speaker is likely speaking to herself rather than her lover. What's more, while Julia is already in love with Romeo, this speaker seems gripped by conflicting feelings. The form of speech differs as well. If Romeo and Julia use elegant and hyperbolic diction to convey their love, this speaker expresses her more complex feelings through what literary critics call incremental repetition. That is, progressive repetition of a core stanza, changing only some words in each repeat. Let us look at how incremental repetition works in this part. In the opening stanza, the speaker states a plea. I beg of you, Zhongzi. Then a warning. 
Don't cross into my hamlet. Don't break my planted willows. Then a rhetorical question and answer to clarify the reason for her warning. Could I care so much for them? It is my father and mother I fear. And finally, a straightforward expression of love and fear. Jung, you are embraceable, but the talk more of my father and mother is indeed something dreadful. This cold stanza is repeated twice in the remainder of the poem. Each time with a variation of words and phrases to create two opposite, but simultaneous movement. First, by describing each new place, the speaker captured the gradual approach of her lover, penetrating layers of barriers, from the hamlet to the family compound to an inner garden, and getting closer and closer to her. In the meantime, with a simultaneous change of people, she reveals an expanding movement of the, her mind. Her fear of accusers, widening out from her parents to her brothers, and to all the people in the hamlet. Incremental repetition figures prominently in most oral tradition throughout the world. For instance, in medieval British and Scottish dialects, as well as the Book of Poetry in ancient China. But in terms of creating dramatic psychological tension, this poem seems unrivaled. In the Book of Poetry, as well as other folk traditions, it is very rare to see incremental repetition generating two simultaneous climatic movements in opposite direction. Inbound versus outbound, physical versus mental, to produce such a riveting effect. For this reason, I consider I beg of you Zhongzi, one of the most memorable poems in the Book of Poetry. What did the Han commentator think of this poem? Zheng Xuan, renowned commentator of Confucian classic, living towards the end of the Han dynasty, had this to say. I beg of you, Zhongzi, is a satire of a Duke Zhuang. He could not restrain his brother, nor could he keep his brother out of harm's way. When his brother Shu Duan of Gong went astray, he did not stop him. Zai Zhong remonstrated with him, but he would not listen. His intolerance of mild criticism eventually led to great calamities. Commentator Zheng reads this poem as an allegorical criticism of Duke Zhuang of Zheng in the 8th century BCE for condoning the evil conduct of his younger brother, Shu Duan of Gong. To make this allegory work, he indulges in gender switching of another kind. He identifies the female speaker with Duke Zhuang, while her lover becomes another man, namely the Duke's minister Zai Zhong. This identification in turn rests on the very distant similarity between the speaker's remarks and Duke Zhuang's rebuff of Zai Zhong. The poem's line, It is my father and mother I fear. It is all my brothers I fear. Was sought to echo Duke Zhuang's rebuff don't impose on my relative. Don't harm my brothers. This commentary strikes us as an even more far-fetched 
than the Osprey commentary discussed in the previous episode. The commentator of Osprey does no violence to the poem's ritual content, as he at least accepts caution as the poem's theme, despite his switching of the speaker's gender. By contrast, commentator Zheng turns a blind eye to an unfolding Romeo Julia-like rendezvous, and fixated instead on a tiny section of the poem that bears loose resemblance to a past event. Based on this loose analogy, he reconceptualized the poem's theme as a condemnation of bad rulership. This interpretive strategy is called a Duan Zhang Qu Yi in Chinese, meaning, quote, cutting off a section from a poem to create a new meaning, unquote. This dismembering or cannibalistic interpretation of the original text may sound very odd and flawed to us, but it was perfectly legitimate in the Han. These interpretive strategies had already been widely used for several hundred years. As explained in episode 4 to 6 by Professor Y. E. Li, diplomatic envoys before and during Confucius' time often recited or performed sections of Shi Jing poems to be interpreted as an analogous expression of state's intents and wishes. If these diplomatic envoys cut off sections of a Shi Jing poem to create new meanings for life diplomatic encounters, Han commentator did the same with known historical events. Only the goals of these two kinds of analogical interpretation are different. In one case, to facilitate an ongoing diplomatic negotiation, and in the other, to tell moralistic tales of the past. So far, we have a look at the two important tools in Han commentator's toolkit, gender switching and, quote, cutting off a section of a poem to create a new meaning, unquote. In the next episode, I will talk about two more interpretive tools, namely structural ambiguity and interiorization, and show how they were used to fashion a moral tale out of an erotic poem. I hope you enjoy the talk. Let us relax and listen to a reading of the poem in Mandarin. Shi Jing, Zheng Feng, Qiang Zhong Zi. Qiang Zhong Zi Xi, Wu Yu Wo Li, Wu Zhe Wo Shu Qi, Qi Gan Ai Zhi, Wei Wo Fu Mu, Zhong Ke Huai Ye. 父母之言亦可畏也 枪重子息,无与我缘,无者我树谈,岂敢爱之,为人之多言,重可怀也,人之多言,亦可畏也。